existing conditions and it's important that they have health care coverage. I think President Trump has done terribly. He lies and he's racist. I like President Trump. I pray for my president every day. I don't trust the man. I don't like him. I vote for character. I think he has none. All right, those are just some of the voices of women who voted in the midterm elections. With more on this, I want to bring in Nicole Bauer. She's a political science professor at Louisiana State University, and she's in Baton Rouge this morning. Good morning. Appreciate you being on our program. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So the Democrats specifically were putting, placing a lot of bets on women coming out to vote. There were a lot of female candidates. What role did the female vote play in yesterday's midterms? So there are two important takeaways from the female vote yesterday. Uh, we saw high, high female turnout, but we also saw that women, when they turn out to vote, they don't vote in a uniform way. Women don't necessarily vote for women candidates. We saw a lot of divides in how women vote. Uh, women of color are the, are the key voting blocks that secured a lot of victories for Democratic women. Um, and so we saw divides between women of color and white women who turned out, but they turned out to vote Republican, and between college-educated and non-college-educated women, where we again see divides. And so female voters certainly have power, but it's not power that is guaranteed for one party or necessarily guaranteed for female candidates. Now, what about the candidates, congresswomen and senators? They've been voted in in record numbers. How will this change the landscape in Washington? I, so there are a couple of points to, to keep in mind about what's going to happen with women in the House versus women in the Senate. And so we've got about 30, I know some votes are still being counted, about 30 new women who will enter into the House with this freshman caucus. And... These women, along with the Democratic takeover, have the ability to help shift the policy agenda of the Democratic Party and the policy agenda of the House to focus more on issues like health care and other policies that really disproportionately affect the lives of women. Um, these women also have the ability and We've seen evidence that women are more likely to support bipartisanship and legislative compromise, and that they're much more focused on producing policy outcomes. And so these freshman women can start to help put some of these different process, processes in place in Congress. Um, that necessarily won't carry over into the Senate, where Republicans have only grown their lead. Um, you know, I think we'll have 23, 24, 24 women in the Senate, which is a record high. But the landscape's very different for women in the Senate with how it functions. Um, two Democratic women lost their seats last night. And, um, you know, a new Republican woman with Marsha Blackburn was added to the Senate. And Jackie Rosen, a Democratic woman, won. Um, and so... You know, the ability of women to change things in the Senate, it's really different with partisan divide there. All right, Nicole Bauer, she's a political science professor at Louisiana State. Thank you so much. Great, thank you.